this video will test some of the ESP32PP firmware capabilities on the MDK external module. The Portapak MyM external module developer kit, as known as MDK, is an extension module designed for the Acrev Portapak H4. It is expanding connectivity with UART. SPI, I2C, GPIO, and the couple Wi-Fi Bluetooth, thanks to the embedded ESP32. This unit was a gift from open source SDR Lab. By the way, if you need any SDR gear, check the store in the description. The unit came pre-flashed with the latest MDK firmware. To verify the board is fully functional, look for the UART application in the utilities menu of the HackerF, which only appears when the board is connected. This application will display any data from pin 14, which means it can be connected to any takes pin from, let's say, a GPS module, for instance. However, at the time of the recording, I didn't have a GPS module yet. So I have tested the UART connectivity with another device familiar to the channel viewers, the Flipper Zero. In this setup, the Flipper Zero listens to the HackerF using the UART terminal application. While the text isn't clearly visible on the Flipper's screen, we get feedback whenever I adjust the HackerF's UART board rate using the dial pad. To facilitate testing various modules, I have installed pin headers. This allows me to modify connections using DuPont cables rather than clips or soldering each time. The trade-off is that it makes reading the pin labels more difficult and the board becomes thicker. Let's look at how to flash the MDK firmware on the board. While we could compile the board firmware and applications ourselves, this requires downloading and installing a fair amount of packages. I initially started compiling the application before having the board for testing. However, there is a simpler way. The open source SDL Labs repository provides pre-compiled binaries along with ESP command flashing for the MDK firmware. For the ESP32PP firmware, several installation methods are available on the GitHub pages. I prefer using the web flasher since it works on any platform with a Chromium-based browser. Alternatively, you can still use dedicated ESP flashing tool on Windows, for instance, or even the ESP tool Python script, or using the OTA flashing tool on the HackerF if you have already the firmware installed. Now, regarding the browser installation method, the installation process is quick and should take less than three minutes. As you can see here, you select the firmware, you confirm the installation, and then you just have to wait a couple of minutes. For my first GPS module test, I connected the ground VCC and URTX pin from the Neo7 GPS module to the MDK board's RX pin and of course VCC and ground one. But due to poor indoor signal reception, I couldn't get a GPS fix. 
This explains why the position shown as 200 something. Once this connection could also be made directly to the HackerF H4 without the MDK board, I have encountered an issue where I couldn't exit the menu without powering off the HackerF completely. For the sensor temperature, I wasn't able to locate the SDR as known as pin 5 on the MDK board. Therefore, what I've decided is to bypass the MDK board and use the sensor temperature directly on the HackerF board. So here, if you are using any compatible one, you could go as well to the extension and read the value from the sensor directly. The web application is one of my favorite features. It enables remote control of the HackerF through a web browser, through with some latency. While I previously tested remote control over SSH using a Raspberry Pi connected via USB, this takes integration to the next level. Since you can use MDK's board built-in Wi-Fi, you do not need any complex setup to remotely access to your HackerF. And this is portable. So just for this, I think it could justify the purchase if you need some of this kind of feature. Let me know in a comment what you think could be done with this board for further applications.